Morning guys. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of problems on page 9 of the Unit 9 Classwork Packet. Um, we're going to be solving uh, trigonometric problems for unknown sides. All right. Now, you, for today you will need a calculator and I want to go over something really quickly. Do you guys all see where it says, well on my, maybe it's kind of hard, um, do you see the little three letters where it says DEG? That's important. You want it to say DEG. If it doesn't, just continue to press the DRG button until you see DEG. Without going into too much detail, um, calculators have what are called modes, and degrees are the mode that we're going to be using for our course, but in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus, we'll be using a different mode called Radian Mode. All right. If you're not in the right mode, all your work and all your answers are going to be very, very wrong. <laughs> okay. So trust me, you want to make sure it says DEG. Now, today what we're going to do is we're going to be solving trigonometric equations that we set up, all right, by using the trigonometric ratios. To show how this works, let's take a look at example number four. All right, so for number four, we're given a right triangle, x, 19, and 28. Now, in order to find that unknown side, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label. I don't need to label all three sides. I only need to label what they gave me and what I'm looking for. So this over here, what they gave me was the hypotenuse. So I'm going to label that as hypotenuse. This one that I'm looking for, well, it's across from the 28. So I would call that the opposite. All right. Now let's think together, which of the trigonometric ratios uses both opposite and hypotenuse? The only one of the three is the sine ratio. So with that being said, I'm going to start setting up some trig. So I'm going to say sine 28. I'm going to go over this in, in, in a minute or two, but that's not multiplication, all right? That's literally 28 plugged into the sine function on your calculator. So hold on a sec, all right? So sine 28 equals x over 19. Why is it x over 19? Opposite over hypotenuse. Now, we learned before that in order to get rid of division, what's the opposite of division? Multiplication, right? So I'm multiplying both sides through by 19, and thus technically my answer is actually 19 sine 28 which looks really really weird but we can now do that on a calculator let's see how okay the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to enter in 28 i'm going to type in 28 like so then i am going to hit the sign key it says sin gives me some weird decimal right then i'm going to multiply that by 19. So I'm going to click times 19, hit equals, and I get this decimal right here, which if I round it to the nearest tenth is going to be about 8.9. Okay, so my actual answer here should be around 8.9. Let me write that down. 8.9 is about equal to x. So let's see what we learned from this problem. Well, first of all, we learned that it's not that hard. Second of all, we learned that labeling is very important. And third, we learned that we need to know how to round, okay? In this particular case, we rounded down, we just kept it at 8.9 because the next number was less than five, right? If it's five or greater, round up. If it's, five or le if it's less than five, round down. Let's take a look at another example. This one will be example number six. Okay, and let's go through the exact same steps once more so you guys understand how to approach these, okay? All right, so there's a right triangle. That's X, 26, and 21. Okay, so first things first, let's do some labeling, guys. Okay, so I know they gave me the hypotenuse because that's across from the right angle. So I'm going to label that HYP. They did not give me the opposite, right? So what's the only one that's left? 
that would be the adjacent. All right, guys, tell me, or I mean, you think it, but whatever, uh, which is the only one of the three ratios that uses both adjacent and hypotenuse? Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? That would be the cosine, okay? So I'm gonna set up an equation. Cos, which stands for cosine, 21, right? That The angle is what gets plugged into the cosine function, equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's my equation. How do I get rid of a divided 26? I multiply both sides by 26, and thus I get 26 cos 21 equals x. Let's go over one more time how to do this on the calculator. First type in the angle. So I'm gonna type in 21. Then I'm gonna hit the cosine key, it's labeled COS. Then I'm gonna multiply by 26. So times two six equals, and I get this. So because the number, right, it looks like it's 24.2 something, the number after the two is bigger than five. Uh, so it, or it's five or bigger, right, it's seven. And so therefore it's gonna round up to 24.3. All right, so in this case, 24.3 is approximately equal to x. Notice why I did the kind of like wavy equal sign, because it's not exact, right? But it's approximate in this case. The last example we're gonna take a look at, do, 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 do. let's see. The last one we're gonna take a look at is example number eight, all right? Because example number eight uses a little bit of funky algebra. Those of you guys who have taken chemistry and maybe like studied the density formula may find this to be relatively easy, okay? But there's one small algebraic trick here we need to make sure we're on top of. So let's go over example number eight. So I have 33, 15, and x. 33, 15, and x. Okay, we're going to start this problem like we did any of the other ones, and we're simply going to label. So in this case, 15 is the opposite because it's across, and this one that I need is across from the right angle, so that's got to be the hypotenuse. Okay, so opposite hypotenuse, this is starting to sound really familiar, that's got to be the sine ratio, all right? So I'm going to set up an equation sine 33 equals 15 over x. Now notice that this equation, guys, is a little bit different because the x, instead of being on top, is on the bottom. That's not okay, all right? We have to get it back on top somehow or in the numerator somewhere. So let me pose this question to you. How do I get rid of a divided x? I would multiply both sides by x. When I do that, I get this. X sine 33 equals 15. The problem is X is not by itself. It's whatever that pesky multiplied sine 33. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So what I'm gonna do actually, is I'm gonna divide both sides by sine 33. So believe it or not, this hot mess over here is actually my answer. Now, my preferred way to do this is as follows. I want you guys to find sine 33 first. So do 33, hit the sine key. So I'm actually gonna write this down. So instead of being 15 over sine 33, it's gonna be 15 over 0.544639 something. I am being a little extra here and I'm actually writing down more decimal points than I need, but I don't want my answer to get thrown off because I'm rounding. Okay, so now I'm actually just gonna put this division in the calculator. 15 divided by 0.544639, and lo and behold, I get 27.54, but four is less than four is less than five, so therefore I'm gonna keep it the same at 27.5. Okay. So what we've done here is we've used trigonometry in order to solve for unknown side lengths, all right? Um, on the actual EOC, you're probably not gonna see a problem like this 
what they're gonna do is they're gonna take this kind of problem and they're gonna make it into a word problem. All right, let me say that again. On the EOC, they're not necessarily gonna test easy peasy problems like this. What they're gonna do instead is they're gonna assess it in a word problem context. So we're gonna go over a few of those problems in a future video.